Now, after mixing the beat and getting a rough mix, I'm gonna move on to a mastering. Um, mastering is just doing, putting, uh, trying to get the most out of what you got from your mix and uh, tracking and everything else. Uh, because we're just mastering a beat and this is probably not the final step of where this beat will be since our intention is to have a rapper to rap and sing or record to this so i'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys to mix and master this as the final product you should mix and master it to the point where it sounds great and to uh, the average person they can't hear any problems with it and it's easy for them to hear every element so in my eq for the master i just did a little dip around that 500 range uh the the vocal the artist's vocal is going to sit probably from 300 to, uh, you know, about 6K, 7K. So there, the vocal is using that whole little area right there. So keeping that in mind. You can kind of see there's not a lot of clashing in there. There's sounds. There's a lot of signal coming through in here. I'm not denying that. But if we look at that low end, it's really. We're seeing a lot of our sounds in like uh, 1500 in around like six to eight K and then in that low end. So obviously the vocal is not going to sit in that low end or not much will sit in that low end. But there will be vocals sitting in that 1.5k so we're gonna do you will want to make sure that you're not having too much of that high end piercing through in that uh beat you want enough but not too much so going i guys a little bit of sound greedizer i'm just doing the most simple very very minimal pump in it i just like it i don't i'm not doing this to it i'm not doing this I'm not even doing this. I'm literally doing like this, that much. Just a little bit of saturation compression, I guess you could say. It's just adding a little bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. Um, then after that, I got my Ozone. I got a um, maximizer and then a vintage limiter. So if you wanna see kind of like the settings I got, I'm trying to maintain uh, the transients while also not trying to pump it too much and I want the claps and all that to still be clear I personally like the I IRC uh, 4 modern uh, template or uh, setting that's just my personal favorite I find that I use it a lot there's some people that like the IRC LL IRC 1 and there's other settings but I personally like the modern one and then vintage same modern so I'm gonna play it. That's without it. So it adds a lot of beat to it. That's without it, that's with it. You could just, it, it pumps it up. There's still room. This is kind of what I'm trying to say. There, There's still room we can make this go louder. We can make this hit harder and like be very full. I just don't see a purpose on doing that, knowing that there's gonna be vocals on this. That's just me. Some guys wanna just, you know, they wanna maximize their beat to be as loud as they can, and so it hits great. But 
I already know that this is not the final stage because this is going to go to an engineer and mixing and mastering engineer for the rapper. They're going to record the rapper. They're going to mix. They might tweak the beat. If they have the track outs and stems, they might tweak it around. They might even change the arrangement. They might remove something. They might change where my kicks come in. They might take away the kicks in the first half of the chorus. I don't know. So I'm not going to be too picky about certain elements just because i know this is going to change down the road potentially they might just use it as is they might get the mp3 track out record do a couple little tweaks put a little mastering like some pump it a little bit and then drop it that might they might just do that um i'm assuming though that they're going to buy the track outs they're going to get the exclusive rights they're going to get it professionally mixed and mastered they're going to go back. They're going to reference the original beat, but they're going to make it better. That's the idea that I have. Um, and that's usually what does happen. So make sure your beats, this is just a very long way. Make sure your beats are sounding good and great and, and professional, but don't be worried about the technicalities of, oh, I can still get more out of this or, oh, blah, 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 blah. And that's really it for the mastering. I just have this limiter on just to kind of see where the headroom is at and what's going on. I'm not really, it's not really doing anything. So yeah, that's uh, this whole entire Taiga, how to make a Taiga type beat. I know it probably went on for quite some time. So um, there's, this video will be broken down into numerous parts. So if you just wanted to watch a specific part, you guys can. Uh, all the specific parts will be uploaded first and then this full video will be uploaded after. So that is that. Hopefully this helps you guys. If you guys have any other questions, need any help, leave a comment down below. If you guys need samples, drum kits, loops, MIDI packs, or more, be sure to go to, over to beatat.com. If you guys want to check out our beats, we also have a beat page there as well. When you go to beta80.com, you just need to pick if you're a producer or an artist. And then based on that criteria, we'll give you a web page that shows you everything you need. If you want to see what the artists get, you can go there. We offer mixing and mastering services for artists. And we also offer beats as well as drum kits, sample kits, midis, loops, and more for producers. This is Andrew at Beta AT. If you guys have questions or such, leave a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys later.